Good evening and welcome to the Bring Your Limericks to Limerick competition 2017. We're delighted to have all of our participants here and congratulations to all the finalists. We would like to let you know that tomorrow we're going to have poetry and music at the Hunt Museum from 3 to 5 and followed by a traditional Irish music session in the loft from 5 to 7. We would like to extend a sincere thank you to Dolan's Warehouse for providing the venue for tonight's event. So thank you very much to Dolan's. And just to say um, a very warm welcome to Dominic Taylor, director of the Limerick Writers' Centre, who's going to say a few words about our funny five-line poem. Thanks, Lisa. Right, uh, welcome again, everybody. Uh, everyone here this evening, I suppose, will, need, will not need reminding about what a limerick is. Nearly everybody knows that a limerick is a funny poem, often ribald, irrelevant, and sometimes vulgar, having five lines with the familiar rhyming pattern of AA, BBA. Now, perhaps the form's body associations has something to do with the limerick not being taken seriously here in the city, which bears its name. And without taking any of the fun out of it, perhaps it is time to take a more serious look at the limerick. Those who work in local bookshops tell me that books of limericks are always in demand by visitors from abroad. Tourists from Europe and America make a link between the famous five-line verse and limerick, the place. And as I will refer to later, limericks have been written in many languages. The potential in linking the famous verse form to our city and county, which carries the same name, has, I believe, remained dormant and untapped for far too long. At the Limerick Writers' Centre, we felt that this connection between the verse known as the Limerick and the city and county of Limerick is something that has not really been explored or used to our advantage here in the region. And if you want to read more about that connection, please read Dr. Matthew Potter's uh, book on sale here tonight, The Curious Story of the Limerick. In 2010, the Limerick Writers' Centre ran a Limerick writing competition. And this competition took on a higher profile with an international call-out in 2013 when it formed part of the gathering celebrations, and again in 2014 when we ran it as a Limerick City of Culture event. We continued to run the competition in 2015 and 2016. And just to dwell for a moment on the philosophy and the international connections of the Limerick. Perhaps the best Limericks are not the most obviously irrelevant or bawdy, but rather there are those which contain the largest amount of improbable incident, subtle innuendo and humour. Giovanni Rodari, a well-known Italian writer and poet in 2010, published a famous book entitled The Grammar of Fantasy. In this book, Rodari sets out the basics of the limerick, reminding us that the fifth and crucial line of the limerick is reserved for the appearance of a final epithet, which is expressly extravagant. Last year, Ezekiel Zeidenberg, a very humorous and very serious Argentinian poet, published a complete book of limericks, beautifully illustrated, entitled Sistaditos Communes. One of his best is a very topical at the moment in the context of Korea and Trump. And the first two lines go, there is a great scientist in Fang Yang who in the stroke of a pen refutes the Big Bang. Now, of course, we, know, we are aware that uh, the limerick is not native to Latin America or Argentina. In fact, it is claimed that the form was brought to Buenos Aires by Maria Elena Walsh, the daughter of a railway worker of Irish descent. As a writer of children books, children's books, Elena Walsh is remembered as a living legend and cultural hero in Argentina. But perhaps the most interesting and exciting international recent connection with the Limerick come to us from Padua in Italy, where last year two young women decided to open a bookshop. Everyone told them that they were crazy, 
especially in the midst of an economic and cultural crisis. However, Martha and Grace did not let themselves be discouraged, even if many people told them that opening a bookshop does not make sense. They went ahead and then decided to give their bookshop the name of Limerick. Their decision, they said, was inspired by their knowledge of and familiarity with the five-line nonsense verse known as the Limerick. These two Italian ladies may even have given us a slogan for our Limericks competition. And may I even suggest that Marta and Grace may even have provided a slogan for our city. When they opened their shop, they said to a local newspaper, we are a bit Limerick. We like to convey a good mood. <laughs> Despite a sometimes very ne negative media image, there is a tremendous spirit and an indomitable sense of hope to be found in whatever part of our city you visit. So could I propose tonight that the new catchphrase for Limerick and for our competition be, we are a bit Limerick, we like to convey a good mood. <laughs> now even the Nobel Prize winning author, thank you. The Nobel Prize winning author Heinrich Boll, who visited Limerick in 1972, also took up this theme when he said, who, thinking of Limericks, could approach Limerick without picturing a cheerful town. <laughs> and, fi and finally, may I say that the Limerick Writer Centre would like to make the Limerick the world centre for this famous verse form. Our Bring Your Limericks to Limerick competition attracts entries from all over the world, and I believe that our project has the potential to attract positive notice for the city and county, and it also has the potential to attract many visitors to the region. Thank you very much. And without further ado, I welcome the wonderful and one and only Miles Breen to commence tonight's proceedings. Uh, hello everybody and welcome uh, to Dolan's. Again, give a round of applause for Dolan's. It's a yeah. perfect place for Limerick, so it really is. Um, uh, I've, I've been doing this since 2013, I think, yeah. uh, definitely. So and it, it's always a great night, always great fun. Uh, so could you all, anybody who entered the Limerick, even if you didn't make the shortlist, boo-hoo-hoo, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Really. Um, uh, Dominic has explained all about the history and the blah, 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 blah. blah. But um, um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to get personal for a moment. Today's my birthday. Oh. Yes. Happy birthday to me. So in the spirit of limericks, I'm going to put a challenge to you. This is not a competition, it's just to see what you come up with. If you fancy, if you have a pen and paper, you should all have a pen and paper on you. You should be all being writers. Uh, finish the limerick. We all know that Miles is quite old. <laughs> and maybe during the break, when the judges are deliberating, we might see what you come up with, all right? Um, uh, as you know, uh, the limericks have been submitted, they've been studied, and they've been shortlisted. Uh, but to all our competitors, I do want to warn you, performance is everything. <laughs> So I will give you a fair warning. Please stay close to the mic so you can be heard down the back. Give it gusto. Give it welly. Give it emotion. Give it something, at least, you know. Uh, the Limerick is not only just a written poem, it's also a performed poem. So the judges will be talking about performance as well. They'll be noting the scansion and the AABBA, which we all know, but also they want delivery. Delivery is very important. Um, now, without further ado, and I know my glasses are broken, I'm very old, leave me alone. <laughs> um, let me introduce you to our judges this evening. I am completely impartial. I'm like Switzerland. I am neutral to the nth degree, but our judges combine an amazing array of beauty, beast, and brains. So starting off with beauty, if you don't mind, Roisin. Roisin. Uh, Roisin Mini, very well known to many of you. And the bloody light up here is crap. Sorry, pardon my language. Uh, Roisin has written 14 adult novels and two children's books. What are adult novels about, love? <laughs> what are children's books about? 
Um, and her work has been translated into German, Spanish, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, Dutch, and Italian. <gasps> With a three-book Russian translation deal in the pipeline, give her a round of applause. <laughs> das Britannia, Russian. Um, now, even better, though, because she's loaded. Wow. <laughs> If writers are loaded. <laughs> yeah, oh well. Uh, all of Roisin's novels have made it into the Irish bestseller list. Ooh. Yeah, give me a better ooh. <laughs> Much better. Uh, with the last week of May uh, going all the way to the top and the people next door uh, and the reunion reaching number two and her most recent book, the street where you live. I live just round the, round the corner, if anybody wants to drop in a birthday card. Um, was published, it is doing great as well. Uh, now we come to The Beast. Oh, and you've been doing this quite a while, haven't you? You've been pretty much here every year. He's vicious, vicious. I don't know if any of you have seen The Chaser. He's like the beast in The Chaser. Oh, if your scansion doesn't scan, if your rhyme doesn't rhyme, oh, he'll take you down. He will take you down. Of course, Owen is a senior lecturer in sociology at UL, uh, where he specializes in media analysis, uh, recognized as an expert in, oh, bloody hell, the light of yours, Brad, in the media and popular culture. He has co-organized symposia on Morrissey, showing your age, the Smiths, really showing your age, and David Bowie. Really showing your age. <laughs> and now we come to brains. Yes, indeed. Uh, Dr. Matthew Potter is curator of Limerick Museum, uh, a graduate of the University of London and NUI uh, PhD. Oh, very posh. Uh, he's the author of several books. And of course, the author of The Curious Tale of the Limerick on sale here. So thank you to our judges. Um, they are, they've, they've studied the limericks already, so the, the, these are the short list of limericks. But I, I do warn all participants, performance is everything. They will be judging on delivery as well. And, you know, so, 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 so really do take that on board. Get your mouth close to the mic. Um, also, little safety announcement, turn off your mobile phones now. Now! I will say it again, turn off your mobile phones now. We don't want a scansion ruined or a rhyme ruined by a do 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 All right. Uh, now I've had a look at the limericks and they cover a multitude of subjects. Multitude. I won't tell you much about the different people coming up and what their themes are, but I'll tell you some of the themes you're going to get tonight. Socks. Sex. Why not? I think I hear you cry. Vasectomy. Don't you require quite went on to that one, love. Uh, and then, of course, Limerick's going to be political, so we have Trump. Oh, uh, yeah. Brexit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can feel the mood going down as we speak. But also, just to bring, finish on a cheery note, and me! There's a Limerick about me! However, I will remind you just... Uh, if you fancy writing a limerick about me, um, we all know that Miles is quite old is the first line. Uh, we would also like to welcome back, defending his title, uh, Dara Roach. Give a big wave, Dara. Hello, Dara. Dara's back, gracefully defending his title. Uh, but it's so lovely, actually. We've got a, a lot of uh, new entries this year. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, Old faces, a lot of new faces, a lot of new faces and old faces. It's a very old joke, I'm sorry. So without further ado, let us start Bring Your Limericks to Limerick Final. Give me a cheer. Uh, so when I call your name, please come up. And the first on our list is Tom McCarthy. Ah, give it up for Tom! My mum, she's older than me. I'm 70, she's 63. How I was wrong to think she'd be gone. No, she could be burying me.
short and sweet and actually Legit. sort of true in my own situation because my mother's 96. <laughs> and now, uh, could I please welcome Rob Cross. Rob Cross, up you come, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, now, I've written Merlin tonight about a very prominent public figure. Uh, I won't say who because the poem doesn't, but uh, I'd like to get into character as them to seek inspiration from my muse. So just give me a second. <laughs> These are limericks, they're not shiners. <clears throat> there once was an orange man who dispense with a climate plan. He builds his wall while the ice caps fall. Is this how the end began? Thank you. John Leahy, please. John, you're up. Oh, be a bit more enthusiastic, people. We're in for a long night on Limerick. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm the man that wrote about the socks, not about the sex, so here we go. This is about uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, and you know that he wears his funky socks, okay? And it's about the socks that he wore when he came to Dublin there back in July. And you know, if he's also known as a bit of a stud, like, okay? Okay, um, the ladies say Justin's a fox, but in fairness, let's look at his socks. I mean, holy cripes, grey and white stripes. They're enough to stop Ireland's clocks. <laughs> I hasten to add, that's not the only socks limerick we have. <laughs> I leave it as a surprise for me. Welcome Philip Gleason, please. Thank you. Philip, you're up. Still not a crime, even if the council don't give a book. We've had socks, we've had politics, and we've had climate change. Where will we go next? I hear you cry. And now let us welcome Christy O'Donnell, please. Thank you, Christy. Up you yes. Up, 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 Christy. The limerick is somewhat sublime, with its metric, rhythm and rhyme. When you get it just right, there is laughter, not quite. I'm hoping the winner is mine. Well done, Christy. A blatant attempt to tell the judges that you know about the limerick. Um, and now Mary O'Shea, please. Thank you, Mary. You're up. father of seven thought that sex was the stairway to heaven. His wife said, no more, you will go straight out that door. You've a date for the slip at eleven. Vasectomy. <laughs> and now can we welcome Tom Mulcahy to the stage please. Tom, you're up. Dennis Allen never used the word maybe, and I've known you since I was a baby. I am limerick and proud, and I'll sing it out loud. Oh, limerick, you are truly a lady. And uh, Patrick is, re just like blind teacher, is a retired taxi driver, likes sunsets, <laughs> romantic dinners, 
But the unfortunate thing is he's a Limerick man living in Clare. Oh. I think I might have been in the first and they've written the uh, theme of the Limerick <laughs> song. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. It's a city that sometimes gets flack. In the media, it's painted quite black. But it's heaven to me, and glad others now see that it's a great place to come for the crack. Uh, when he said crack, that's not the drug, lads, all right? <laughs> uh, please welcome John Garrett. John Garrett, you're up. ago I had the pleasure of attending the world premiere of Angela's Ashes, the musical, and this is what I took from it. Limerick, the Shannon, the rain. Howell's music is bringing her fame. Jay White has it nailed. This mother's not failed. Her spirit for long be aflame. Uh, well done, John. I, indeed, I really enjoyed Andrew's Ashes as well. I did brilliantly both here in Limerick and in Borgosh. And um, who knew you could make a music about people suffering in rain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. Now, uh, before I go on, I'd just like to call... Uh, oh on. I'm on uh, Georgina Downs. Georgina? Georgina? Uh, before I'm, I... I forgot to mention the prizes! Make your way up, please, Georgina. Thank you. Uh, the prizes are for the winner of 500 euro. Woo! If I was Bruce Forsyth, God rest his soul, you'd have got to boo. Okay. The prizes are first prize, 500 euro. <laughs> so uh, please give it up for Georgina Downs. So this is the second Sox one, and the first one was about the Canadian Prime Minister, so this one is about Leo. So here it goes. Veradker is so unorthodox, with his penchant for brightly dyed socks. He loves early risers and right-wing advisers, but the poor can go live in a box. <laughs> that politician socks was a theme for poetry. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Uh, and could I please welcome Martin Cahill? Martin Cahill, please. Uh, uh, Martin Cahill is sort of half a cash, half a Kilkenny cash. Hey, hey, Martin. Bit of a me rather than a meow. <laughs> By the banks of the Shannon, so fair, writers gather together to share their poems and prose, but the format I chose is the limerick to show off my flair. Uh, now obviously I am independent, neutral, etc, etc, but the next reader is an actual dear friend of mine from many, many years ago, and we've done many plays together. So could I please welcome Monica Spencer to the stage. Oh, all the way down the back. You're such a shrinking violet, aren't you, Monica? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miles. Happy birthday to you. Cash never offends, by the way. <laughs> this is a very brief limerick love story. 
an erotic young woman named Sue came by Sarsfield asleep in Maru. As he opened his eyes, she did straddle his thighs, singing Paddy, I'm glad you came too. <laughs> And the title of that limerick aptly is Sarsfield's Ride. <laughs> uh, and now could we welcome Newt Skinner, a regular contributor to this. Newt, Newt, you're up. Canute, oh sorry, I do apologise. It's Canute, I do apologise. The K is not silent. Now known as Jim. <laughs> I think you may recognize the subject of this limerick. A hearty young MC named Miles performs all his duties with smiles. He tells outrageous jokes as he banters with folks, and nobody says he has piles. <laughs> It's unfortunate to be called Miles sometimes. So, so. <laughs> but thank you for making it clear that I do not have Miles, even at my advanced years. My mother warned me never to sit in cold flagstones, so. <laughs> There's a certain generation out there who get that. Or don't put your, don't put your arse up against the radiator either. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, just, I'm in a moment. Uh, uh, Bernadette Nureda, Bernadette, you're up now, please. Thank you very much, Bernadette. <laughs> she just said, that's what my mother told me. Keep them waiting. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I didn't write about socks or sex. <laughs> Whether there's a connection between the two or not, it's not for me to say anyway. <laughs> So, this is my contribution. The Shannon puts on quite a show and gives Limerick that much envied glow. Some folks up in Dublin have heard her soft bubbling. Now they plan to steal summer for flow. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I, I will call... Uh, uh, could we call uh, Seamus Harrington? Seamus? Seamus? You're up, you're up, you're up. Bernie's a very nervous cork man. He didn't want to go first, which is so strange for cork men, really. Uh, just while you're getting yourself prepared, uh, Seamus. On the subject of socks and sex, gentlemen, it is not okay to wear socks during sex. And socks with sandals. <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh, oh. When you're in Thanks, Miles. You tweet like you're fit to implode. Each bulletin more like a node. Forget your fake news. It fails to amuse. It's Limerick's big night dot road. <laughs> And now could we please give a big cheer for Kathleen Farley. Kathleen, you're up. <laughs> we having a good time, lads? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do in five lines. Oh, yeah. We've covered socks, sex and vasectomy. And politics. And Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined to go on a diet and reduce all my critics to quiet. They'll ask, how did you trim so delightfully slim? I'll say, peanuts and gin. You should try it. Peanuts and gin sounds like a plan. <laughs> it really does. Uh, and now can we please welcome Sheila Segru? Uh, Sheila, you're up. 
Sheila, a regular contributor, regular. Beat him off with a stick, Sheila. <laughs> I wrote my limerick about the poet W.B. Yeats with a mention of his true love, Maud Gon. When Yeats walked in cool at the dawn, he counted each elegant swan. Nine and fifty, he said, with a shake of his head. There was one more here, but she's gone. Oh, and now, because this is the international Bring Your Limericks to Limerick Festival, Claire doesn't count, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to welcome a visitor from the U.S. of A. So please put your big warm Limerick welcome for Limericks to Margaret McKitty. Yeah. Margaret, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm due one, you're fine. <laughs> Well, since I'm from New York, uh, I, this, this limerick is a, kind of a tribute to old New York. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens, living in Connecticut. Before we had an Irish New York, we had an English New York, and we had a Dutch New York. So, listen carefully. There once was a producer named Bringle who wanted to give the big boss a jingle, but he sent him a fax without checking the fax. So the big boss cut off Bringle's jingle. I'm a little bit intrigued now, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently we have a well-known well-known uh, uh, reporter who has entered our Limerick's competition. That's John Waters. <laughs> John Waters? Oh, maybe not that John Waters. John? <laughs> oh, thank you very much for that, John. John Waters run deep. God, he's aged. <laughs> How's Sinead? <laughs> Uh, this is about the hot air around the door. The EU laid out <coughs> stiff conditions regarding our greenhouse emissions. The polluters must pay, so they set from today a waffle tax on politicians. <laughs> Now I'll give a big cheer for Mario Sullivan. Mario, you're up. I'm very small. Thank you. Well, mine is about uh, the monuments. Some of the monuments of our city. Just some thoughts on them. Sarsfield looks prime for the fight. The camp here dancers a delight. But Dickie's too small. <laughs> Wogan's not right at all. <laughs> Melt them down. Start again. Get it right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done, well done. I brought my mother down to, to see the Terry Wogan show. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> he looks odd. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. And uh, now, Lucy Gibbons. Lucy, please. Oh, big support for Lucy here. Your yeah, audience reaction is important as well. The judges can be swayed. Good evening, everybody. This is my limerick for a limerick and my dad. There is a wonderful place in the West, a city which is the very best. The people, the places, and all the smiling faces 
a step above all the rest. Gorgeous, no. Um, and now we'd like to welcome to the stage um, a lovely young lady. Um, I think this is your first time entering the Lemis competition, so well done on getting the shortlisted. Um, I will say, because I know her personally, again, I'm not a judge. Nothing to do with me, lads. But please welcome to the stage a very dear personal friend of mine, a beautiful singer and talented young lady, Miss Emma Langford. Oh, yeah. usually read poems. I usually sing songs, so this is nerve-wracking. Um, I, will I read my one about you as well? Oh, okay. Okay. okay, that's for later? Okay, later. cool. Um, I wrote a, a limerick about uh, the, the slack and the flack that millennials get all of the bloody time. Um, Antishach has lately decreed that an increase in housing we need, so he's banned macchiatos, seized all avocados, and we'll build houses out of the seeds. I wish I was a millennial. <laughs> but I'm not. Right, I don't even know if I'm a baby boomer. I think I may have fell between two cracks. Uh, and now, oh, oh, now we bring on the serious. It's like the Conor McGregor flash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back to defend his title. Dun, dun, dun. Please welcome to the stage last year's winner, Dara Rose! This will be a diva for another five minutes. <laughs> Look him in the eye, look him in the eye. You want a lawsuit in your hands? <laughs> Evening, nice to be back. Never left. I promise no speeches this year. Whoa. Unless I win. Oh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> there once was a man from Limerick. Whose poems were clever and quick. But he couldn't be seen to write verses obscene, but the conscience of listeners he'd prick. <laughs> and now we come to uh, Derek O'Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy, Shaughnessy, Shock. Dennis, Dennis. sorry, I do apologise. Told you, eyesight gone. <laughs> You're very tall. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> you've, all, you've all heard of the um, gospel rhyme. Uh, Mary had a little lamb. This is a limerick version. Now, when I said limerick, it's in, as in the poem. So this is an every version of Mary and the Little Lamb. There once was a girl called Mary who loved her pet lamb very dearly. I'm not your pet lamb. <laughs> <laughs> but it climbed up a pile and its fleas turned to nylon. <laughs> Now she's stockings to wear almost daily. <laughs> Last limerick of the evening. Oh, no. Unless you've written one about me saying we all know that Miles is quite old and we'll have a few more. But for now, our last finalist, please give a huge warm welcome to Michael Jurak, please. Michael, you're up. One yet. <laughs> okay. A liberal priest from Clondalkin said all his parishioners talking. When a young man confessed 
to a ride in the West. He said, anything's better than walking. <laughs> Gentlemen, that's, that's all of our Olympics for this evening. Uh, short, sweet, rude, political, socks, for some strange reason, I have no idea why. Uh, but our judges now will go away and cogitate. They will be judging on the scansion, they'll be judging on the rhyming pattern, they will also be judging on performance and delivery. So we're going to give them a little bit of time to do that. Uh, we're going to take a little short interval, but then we're going to have some little bit of music uh, before we announce the winners and the runners up. The winner receives a cheque for 500 euro. Runners up receive uh, 50 euro vouchers from Omani's, and we're very grateful for their sponsorship. Uh, hope you enjoy them. And if you fancy, in the break, write a limerick, starting with the line, we all know that Miles is quite old. See you in 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, while the judges are cogitating, uh, we have a few treats for you. Uh, we'll have a little bit of music and a little bit of uh, in a few minutes. But as I, I did set you a challenge. I did, didn't I? Say yes, Miles. Say it like you mean it. Much better. So if anybody cares to come up and share their limerick, we all know that Miles is quite old. Please. I would love to welcome you to the stage and see how insulting you can be to me. <laughs> A limerick virgin! Oh. I didn't even know there was such a thing! <laughs> they all say that Miles is quite old. So in order to keep out the cold, he dons his new jacket, which cost him a packet, and he's still paying back, so I'm told. Yay. Anyone else? It's a free for all, lads. Up you get. Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, Philip. Um, this is Thank you. We all know that Miles is quite old, and the shite he comes out with, quite bold. <laughs> <laughs> He's intelligent with, despite his old shit. <laughs> Makes him prince of the sage, so I'm told. <laughs> Old is not that bad a rhyme to go with, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Miles always ends up with pious. Here we go, oh. Emma. <laughs> Here we go. Miss Emma Langba. We Miles. all know that Miles is quite old. Fashioned in his behaviour, I'm told. Though his language quite shady, unbecoming a lady. For a man oh so brilliant and bold. Oh. <laughs> For those of you who know me, there's a reference to my oeuvre yes. language on becoming a lady in there, as they say. Very, very clever. Very clever. Next! Next. <laughs> I've entitled this Ode to the Old. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> we all know that Miles is quite old, and of course is so terribly bold. Quiet he is not, and will never be forgot even buried in the grave and stone cold. <laughs> I'm not that bucking old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it anyway. Do it. 
I'm feeling confident. She says, I think this is crap, but I'll do it anyway. We all know that Miles is quite old. Oh, okay, let's start again. We all know that Miles is quite old. Locally, he's worth his weight in gold. But now he's got twinges in all of his hinges. He's no longer able for late night binges. This birthday boy has truly broken the mold. <laughs> sure if the judges were here that would scan as a limerick. Just being a little bit picky here. Anyone else? Next! Q. Q if you want to. Oh, he's got the mics. Okay, this poem is writ or limerick was written by my mum, Anne Garrett. We all know that Miles is quite old, is cheerful and funny and bold. His mother is 90, they both are quite feisty, and now they are looking for gold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm not feeling that feisty at the moment. Next! Oh, last year's champion. People generally don't have a problem hearing me, I'm loud enough as it is. We all know that Miles is quite old, but we don't believe the stories we're told. We know he behaves, and daily he shaves. He's never made, li made husbands cook cold. Well, considering marriage equality, that might be a possibility now. <laughs> Next! Anyone else? I think we're done. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Here we go, here we go. We all know that Miles is quite old. He's worth his own weight in white gold. But bear this in mind. He's one of a kind, alas, to have broken the mold. Oh. I think we're done. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them are nice, some of them are not so nice. But unfortunately, I have no prizes to give out. We must wait for the judges. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, take a little break. Get yourself a drink at the bar. We're going to have some music in a moment. So uh, thank you to all who wrote limericks, starting with the line, we all know Miles is quite old. Please give them a huge round of applause. And thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. How are you doing? Hi. Enjoying yourself so far? Yeah. Best pub in town, isn't it? We're Sean and Killian. I'm Killian, he's Sean. I'm just going to play a few tunes for you.
ended up with a match this time. Um, this is going to be our last piece. <laughs> um, it's a tune called Napoleon Crossing the Alps. Hope you enjoy the rest of your night. You've all been fantastic. <laughs>
Amen. Uh, please give it up for our musicians. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The judges have cogitated, studied, argued. Shh, quiet, please. Miles is talking. It's my birthday. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, they've had uh, they've had a very difficult decision, actually, in fairness. Um, also, uh, to anyone who entered in Limerick, and I know there's a number of people uh, who entered Limericks, but unfortunately could not be here. But the whole point of this competition is you have to dirt up on the night and perform your Limerick. But um, anything that encourages writing, encourages embracing the Limerick, encouraging, which, look, uh, let's be... Brutally honest, um, AA, BBA, and Scansion. Um, it's a great way to get kids, adults writing. Uh, even tonight, we had somebody who wrote her first limerick, even. So, you know what I mean? Um, it's not, not as scary as you think it is. So, um, but congratulations to all our finalists and all the rest. Now, before we announce the winners, can I get a drumbeat? Very good. Uh, I would like to welcome on stage uh, the Simon Cowell, the beast of our judging panel, Mr. Own Deborah, to talk about the memories he heard tonight. Uh, thanks, Miles. And um, I want to say a few words on behalf of the judges. And I'd like to begin by asking all of you here, the participants, people who have come along to support the uh, people reading their lovely limericks this evening, to give a big um, round of applause really to the Limerick Writers' Centre and to Dominic Taylor in particular. <laughs> this um, particular project that Dominic has led uh, the Limericks competition has been running now for a number of years and it has done so without support. It has had no support from yeah. City Hall. But we all know of course that culture will prevail and cultural activity will prevail. Yeah. So thank you Dominic and the Limerick Writers Centre. <laughs> so the judges were really taken with the overall standard of the Limericks that they heard, that we heard uh, this evening. And we, we talked in our deliberations generally at the start about how the, the standard of limericks being uh, entered in the competition has shown uh, you know, a really significant improvement. So we're, we're really, really welcome that and see the competition as having huge uh, potential. Um, we read the shortlist at limericks in, in advance. And as Myers and others said, we placed a particular emphasis on the delivery, on the performance of the limericks. We were also interested in their topicality. And topicality can, of course, stretch from a specific issue in Limerick City to the rise of that awful clown, uh, Donald Trump. Um, so we heard lots of that. And it's good to see uh, the Limerick being used uh, as a way of, 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 in a funny way, in five lines, critiquing uh, the politically powerful. So we were interested in topicality. We were interested in the performance and delivery of the Limericks. And of course, whether the individual pieces, whether they conformed to what is accepted as being the particular uh, structure of uh, the limerick. And it was wonderful as well, because I think I may have said this last year, that when um, the, the limericks, uh, began, when limericks began... You know, they're, they're, I suppose one of the things that's most striking about limericks is the best limericks have a body, earthy uh, element uh, to them. So we heard lots about sex and socks. And the sect to me, as, as uh, Myers and others uh, mentioned this evening. So we really, really liked uh, uh, the limericks that we uh, heard. So then we went through the process of, of marking and scoring and discussing. And we have come up with uh, three winners. And uh, I'll now hand over to Miles to give you the good news. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could you please give a round of applause to all our judges? Thank you. Um, so, uh, if I call your name, gasp. If I call your name, 
Yeah, we try a gasp, lads, all right? Okay, let's try it again. If I call your name, much better, thank you very much. I will require you to come up on stage and perform your winning, if not the total winning limerick, if you know what I mean. So, uh, without further ado. Oh my God, I feel like I'm on the X Factor. <coughs> where's, where's the tense music? I, could sh I should just point. In third place. Is Bernadette. Bernadette, if you please come up here. Thank you. Third place, Bernadette. Bernadette near She's on her way. She knows her name. This may be very boring for the rest of you. It's very important for PR purposes. Uh, so without further ado, our third place, Bernadette, it's up to you. You're winning Limerick. <laughs> The Shannon puts on quite a show and gives Limerick a much envied glow. Some folks up in Dublin have heard her soft bubbling. Now they plan to steal some of her flow. Well and now. We come to second place. In second place is. I'm opening the handwritten envelope. Oh, bloody hell, I can't see it. John! John! Lee! John! Lee! Your writing is atrocious, Dominic! John, you're up. Charlie. You're not bloody Conor McGregor. Can you move a bit faster, love? Da -da 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 -da. You only came second, by the way. I hope Conor doesn't, by the way. Gentlemen, back to sock time again. Um, God, can I remember now? Oh yeah. The ladies say Justin's a fox, but in fairness, let's look at his socks. Uh, God, stuck now. Oh yeah. Graham white stripes. I mean, holy cripes. They're enough to stop Ireland's flocks. And now we come to the supreme winner of Bring Your Limericks to Limerick. Can I get a woo woo? Um, as always, I'm impartial. I'm Sweden. I am neutral. I had nothing to do with this decision. But I am delighted to welcome on stage a dear, close, personal friend of mine. Well, I've shared the stage with many, many times. Miss Monica Spencer! I had 
nothing to do with this. I don't even really like her. And now our finalist, Miss Monica Spencer, will perform her winning limerick for the Bring Your Limericks to Competition 2017. So I just want to do a very quick, short plug for this competition. I think it's fantastic. I agree totally with Dominic that Limerick, I mean, it's such an obvious festival, isn't it? It's a way to brand if you want to sell it to the higher powers. I was in England recently in Robin Hood country where my son is living. And there isn't a hint of Robin Hood. You can't find a Robin Hood t-shirt. It's like when something is so obvious, yeah. you know? But I mean, we should really, I think, look at this festival. It could be absolutely massive and it's great yeah, fun. Really. And I'm thrilled to have won it. So here's my short love story for Limerick. An erotic young woman named Sue came by Sarsfield asleep in Maru. As he opened his eyes, she did straddle his thighs singing Paddy. I'm glad you came too. Give it up for your winner of the Bring Your Limericks to Limerick 2017. That's Monica Spencer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Dolan's, to Amani's, to the Writers' Centre, to our judges, to you, the audience, uh, to everyone who entered the Limerick, Please give a huge round of applause! And if you didn't put out a limerick this year, it's tricky, it's hard, but it's something you can have a go at. Uh, we had a, a, a limerick virgin here tonight who wrote her first limerick. All of you could be limerick virgins next year and it could be taken away. <laughs> so please, join us again next year for 2018. Always a great night, always good fun, and nothing wrong with encouraging people to write, to rhyme, uh, to be bawdy, to be political, to be, to be fun. This is always a great night, and I always really enjoy it. So for me personally, Miles Bree, and I'm sure from all the organizers, a huge thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Could I have a third, second, and first place back up on stage just to get a photo of our three winners, if you don't, if you don't mind? And bring, bring your plaques. Bring your plaques. Which I do quite